I was understanding stuff that I didn't realize. And I, the whole end time thing was, was looking a lot different than I had I kind of put in my mind. But anyway, was it that way for any of you too? Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. I, read. I was I was getting there like is he gonna be a king, anointed a king? And then I was just trying to think through how is that gonna work? <laughs> he was saying that was um uh, Egypt's pharaoh and the, in the end time right America is Egypt and so right that put a whole different light to who this end time servant is to me that I that was striking I was like whoa wait is he saying the servant is pharaoh I was thinking that was the I thought the pharaoh was the antichrist did I hear that today? No, 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 no. I don't think so. I, yeah. I went to the temple Thursday and Friday to try to figure all this out. I didn't get too far, but <laughs> <laughs> I was, my head's just spinning about. Yeah, because we're talking about end time servant. I don't think we talked about the Antichrist at all um, in this discussion. But I've just been studying like, um, Isaiah 48, well, 44, 45, all in the 40s there, 48, 49, I think it said. Yeah, 49. And then I went into Nephi, I think that's 20 and 21. And I did in the temple get a confirmation that this is true. So that helps me because... Mm -hmm. You know, Avraham's lecture, you know, he talks about it. I don't know how you can't see it. I don't know how people can just know this is here. I don't know how he exactly said it, but I was just like, oh, well, then I've got to ask. Because last week we talked about, or last time we met, go into the temple and ask. Mm -hmm. So I did two days in a row. I was so tired. <laughs> <laughs> I go 500 miles. <laughs> oh wow! In the last two days. Good for you. A lot of time to ponder, huh? <laughs> yeah, and I got 42 names done. So, oh my god, lots of ceilings. But yeah, I... well, now you got me all curious. Like, I'm gonna have to go back and, and re-listen to to things and and everything. Jesus, um. Should I go find it? And I kind of it? Well, yeah, if you want to. Um, okay, I pull anything up on. I had it pretty. Okay, you guys keep talking, and I'll go find it because I have it pretty good here. Oh, that's awesome. Does yeah. anyone remember? You know, this is kind of a, a random thing, but like when uh, I did my roundtable discussion with Avraham last year during Come Follow Me. Um, I, it was such a blur because uh, my portion was about the, the servant and I really hadn't studied it yet at all or anything. Uh, it was like totally new to me, but uh, a lot of things were brought up in there that were very interesting. Um, but at the same time, it's been a while. I'm going to have to go back and rewatch it. But I remember uh, thinking at the time, oh, that's finally starting to make a little bit of sense to me. Um, but now I'm going to have to go watch it and this... Um, re-listen to, to this lecture today and, and kind of piece things together because um yeah very interesting what you what you all are saying hmm. yeah because if you start to think about it logically okay and i guess it just this could get really political i don't mean it to but you think about who the pharaoh is i'll just use terms like that and then mm -hmm. you're like oh my goodness because I I just don't know because all the things I've figured out in the world just does not make sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can't, and maybe we're not to who that Pharaoh is yet. Yeah, I I I can't imagine that we are. <laughs> that, well, even oh, if it's yeah. like another president, you know, 
running the mm-hmm. show behind the scenes. I still, I can't imagine that one either because I don't want to get too political. <laughs> yeah, I I think with you know how if you've uh, paid attention to Ezra Ziegel thing at all, yeah, I think we're in for a big shakeup, um, right. and maybe through all that it gets better. We can only hope. Yes, may I um, add something? I I don't want to get political either, but coming from the Isaiah Institute's perspective, um, I don't know if it's still their perspective, but they did put out a lot of YouTube videos, and I don't even know if they're still up, when um, President Obama was the president, and they had him dressed up as a pharaoh. So when I saw those, and like I said, I'm I'm being apolitical, but when I saw those, I thought, well, okay, so that's the message that they're putting out. Mm-hmm. Take yeah, it or I leave haven't it. been around that long, but that, that's interesting. Has anybody else seen that one? I've seen him dressed up as Satan, so. Yeah, I. but you know, Satan knows this plan, and I mean, he's going to do a counter. Uh, he always does usurp things. And so, you know, maybe that's to throw us off. You I think don't... the Isaiah Institute is putting out videos to throw us off? That was by the Isaiah Institute? Yes, it was. Oh, my goodness. I, I well, swear but, I've listened to a number, like, you know, between them and, like, Rhonda Pickering, who really, like, teaches their stuff. I thought, I swear that she's talked about the titles of the Antichrist being, you know, King of Assyria, the Pharaoh of Egypt, the, I, yeah, I mean, I would love to, like, I, I don't remember coming across. I don't know why I don't remember that. I've listened to this twice this, this last week, but I'd love to, if you guys, yeah, you know, did where that was, because I'd love to go back and listen. I'm looking. I'm. Oh, just, you're still searching. I'm still looking. <laughs> Thanks, Tracy. <laughs> what minute was the middle? I'm still, I can't find the middle still. Um, goodness. Um, I think it was, I think it was a hour and 40 minutes so that would make it let's see 50 minute ish because i remember when i finally got there the other day it was really well marked this is the middle but now i can't Mm -hmm. find it it was just there oh there it is it's still there it says midway point (laughs) It starts oh, yeah. minute forty eight sixteen. So I'll start looking because I know it was after that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, because I'm kind of like Amy. Like I don't remember that from this week's thing, but you know, I I was just listening to it and I wasn't taking as as many notes as I usually do. Because I with like what Lisa was saying with Pharaoh and uh, one of the presidents of the United States kind of a thing. Like that seems to to resonate as like uh, Egypt is. Uh, modern day America and um, you know, the pharaohs are, are that the, the priests of Noah um, are the, the different leaders and we're taught aren't we that in the latter days when the constitution's hanging by a thread that somehow our church will help save us aren't we taught we that the, or that the elders or the elders yeah i don't know that just popped into my head yeah i i'm not sure like i i've definitely heard that a lot and stuff but we've got some sisters of liberty on here don't we Uh, you guys would probably (laughs) have those references on the tip of your tongue (laughs) (laughs) it's right in my neighborhood i know i know so many of the sisters that go yeah I've seen a few of the videos, but I wouldn't say I'm one of them. 
Um, but yeah, so what other characteristics and things were pointed out in this lecture? So we've got um, kind of the, the Egypt and, and kind of a, a pharaoh motif here. What other kind of things does he point out about the end time servant? Because this one is kind of dealing with um, dreams and visions and, and Book of Mormon versus next week's lecture is all about uh, direct from Isaiah and things, right? So what other things were, were pointed out this week? Um, well, we I remember I starred also that he'll have the spirit of the power of Elijah is calling an election made sure at the seraph level, translated being. And I that was very interesting to me yeah. too. Um, it just really, mm -hmm. I, I think we should be able to kind of know who this guy is. And so, and then also the name David. So I just, I'm going to stick with that. Looking for a David. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that's such an interesting principle to me. And when, when my brain finally caught hold of that fact that the Davidic covenant is an everlasting covenant that the, the Davidic line will be in the end time. Um, it's like, oh, I, I don't know. I just never got that ever in, in my other studies or anything like that. And so it was a very eye-opening thing for me um, to, to know that that Davidic monarchy will, will play a, a huge role in, in the end time and that those blessings the Lord has promised uh, unconditionally will be restored even as at first so anyway that was very intriguing to me any time that we're talking about davidic covenants davidic lineage uh, the monarchy etc mm -hmm. and a, another thing that stuck out to me uh, he was talking about the first david king david and how he had his calling and election made sure but then he mm -hmm. he fell it wasn't the the chastity part that made him uh, fall so far, it was spilling the blood. No, and, yeah. you know, we always hear that. It, it, you get your calling election, make sure <laughs> you can't spill any blood, have any blood spilled, or you're just... Mm -hmm. you know. But he went on to say that... Um, you know, David is has been suffering for that and everything. He thinks it's this is just Avraham that said this, but he says he can't imagine that that is like forever that he he won't be able to get his exaltation at some point. He said he thinks that's one of our um, precept of man thing that we've come up with. Yeah, I remember that, seeing that too. And so that gave me a little hope for David. I've always I felt know. so bad about that. that. Dude. Yeah. But you have to remember Laman and Lemuel, all the, you know, wonderful blessings they had and they still fell. Mm -hmm. Well, Lucifer, he was awesome and he fell. You know, yeah, but it, yeah, but it's a really good point. I've I've thought about that too sometimes, um, Tracy. You know, when they when I read certain things that say that once you've reached this level, you're you know you're kind of good, you're safe. But what about what about the fallen angel of fall, the angel of light, Lucifer? Mm -hmm. yeah. He was very up there you know yeah but we do have you know we, we do see with the psalms and stuff just a repentant heart in david mm -hmm. um, which you know just seems like in god's the god we know and worship i mean a repentant heart he there's always there's always a chance right and which is very different from Lucifer. Lucifer, yeah, yeah, repentant yeah. hearts. Yeah. There's a huge difference. Huge difference there. Yeah, um, I can remember reading. He was begging to build the temple. Please let me in. He's like, nope. Mm -hmm. nope. Yes. Yeah. Um, one thing about the, the David that really 
I, I loved that Avraham pointed out and um, really got me thinking was when he was talking about, um, he was talking about like Ezekiel 37 and he's talking about one stick coming together with another stick, you know, and he's saying that translation is tree and not, you know, tree would be a better word instead of stick and bring them together. And we always, you know, we, I think everybody thinks, you know, Book of Mormon and Bible, which, you know, coming together. Um, but I just then, found that that's it. One hour. Oh, four. So I found that. What was it? You're at one. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on that right now. I'm right. still looking guys. Sorry. Well, then he goes into the type and shadow of you know the past David as the king bringing together the northern and the southern tribes and them becoming one nation um and he and he uses that imagery of the the two trunks growing together into one mm -hmm. tree and that representing the house of Israel coming together and um and I just think that's such a cool that's just such a cool vision, you know, as part of that, that restoration of the house of Israel and, and kind of showing the role of the latter day King David being, you know, as I, for some reason, I, I, I totally spaced that like King David did bring those, the kingdoms together into one. And so the latter day David will do the same. And I'm thinking too, like when he was talking about Ephraim, you know, like Book of Mormon and Bible, like specifically the, you know, Ephraim was kind of the head tribe of the Northern Kingdom and then Judah. And, and again, there's just all that imagery is just so yeah. amazing to me. Just the, you know, as I think that's the biggest, uh, oh, one of my favorite things that I've learned from Avraham is just, you know, when I'm reading Ephraim, thinking about us as Latter-day Saints and our role and, and, and then, and then just the, the relationship between Ephraim and Judah, like, is so important. And, and it makes me so excited to see how that plays out, you know, and through all, all we'll, we'll see. Yeah. So I was talking, it was funny because uh, I didn't get to this part in the recording yet, but I was talking with uh, my rabbi about the, the two sticks growing together kind of a thing. And she's like, what are you talking about sticks? <laughs> like, she was like, that was totally new to her or whatever. And she's like, it says trees. <laughs> cool. Wow, that's so cool. Cool, Cam. And I love that. I love that you're having a live discussions where you can say something wrong and she can say what <laughs> that's way cool that imagery is amazing though like what that mm -hmm. being able to think of that and see that you know it makes so much sense you know i love that little correction that he shared it makes it seem so much more alive too trees not just sticks <laughs> i like the idea of the trees like you said it's a beautiful image mm. Yeah. Have any of you read uh, Linda Cherry's new book, uh, Judah and Joseph? Like, haven't yet. Have you read it? Because it's like hard to hear. Oh. Who's the author on that one? Linda, Linda Cherry. Cherry. It's her latest, latest book. It's on Joseph, and, Judah, and Joseph. And her last name's Cherry. The whole thing, yeah. Um, the whole thing and how Peter Linda Cherry. Yeah, Cherry is in the fruit. Yeah, anyway, it's it's an amazing book that really is helping us kind of backwards Ephraimites realize kind of some of the end time stuff here where we, we're not the whole shebang. <laughs> we've, we've got to be able to unify Judah and Ephraim together and, and bring these two trunks together. It's not just about, uh, I don't know. It's sometimes a, a little embarrassing how egotistical we are as Ephraimites. And so like 
realizing that the servant, whoever it uh, ends up being, is playing the role of David and uniting the the northern and the southern tribes again under one banner in in one hand, right? Like, and they shall be one in thy hand. Uh, it's going to be something that I think that but we just don't can't even comprehend in in our kind of Western mindset, uh, whatever you call it. But anyway, yeah, that's an excellent book that really deep dives into all of the background and and foundation of what it means uh, to be the two leaders of of the tribes, the Judah and the, the, the Joseph. That's very cool. And I'm thinking I'm always making parallels with the past and the and the end time. And the Jews at the time of Christ's first coming were completely discombobulated, like going, what? We're inviting Gentiles. We don't even eat with them. They are unclean. What do you mean? And it just really discombobulated them. And I'm just wondering how discombobulated some of us are going to be. Well, I think Mm -hmm. we're like the Pharisees and Sadducees. Yeah that the pattern is going to repeat itself. I I have a testimony of that. And we are in such danger as we think we know it all. And, you know, there's going to be, I think, Amy, you said this last week, I watched the video, well, the last time we met, about there will be like a John the Baptist come. uh, This is who the... Davidic servant will be right he's the 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 forerunner before the second coming and we're just exactly like the Pharisees and the Sadducees we're like oh no it's not going to happen like that (laughs) I found it you guys it's at one minute 19 and it's talking about Revelation 12 let's see and this isn't isn't transcribed so i'm going to read what it says and i might have to go back (laughs) so we're talking about the seven crowns upon his heads and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven cast him to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to be delivered to devour her child as soon as it was born Now, you have to understand that the dragon is thrown from heaven to the earth and becomes a person on the earth. He appears in Ezekiel. Ezekiel calls him Pharaoh. Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Now, dragon, you have to interpret the book of Revelation by going back to the imagery in the Hebrew prophets. He also appears in the book of Isaiah. As we'll see, the dragon is a person on the earth. And if he's king of Egypt or the end time Pharaoh, then we have a good guess of who it is. Because once we know what Egypt is a code name of, right, then we know who the Pharaoh is. It's that simple. So where did he come from? Where is where he has Prehistory, guess where? Okay, so this is where it's not translate transcribed. This is a backstory here. It doesn't make sense right there. Mm-hmm. So we'll have to go in and. It would be interesting to know exactly the date that he gave this address, and see who. I have that on my computer somewhere. Just to set it into a historical context, what year it was. And then Mm -hmm. it was either 2014 or 15. Who was president then? What were the politics happening then? I'm pretty able. That would be. um, The Bushes, wouldn't it? Well, is he is he saying like. It'd be Obama at that point. Oh, yeah, it'd be Obama at that point. I I think uh, Trump got in in 16, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, he started in 17, I think. Uh-huh. Um, uh huh. Here we're talking about the dragon. That makes me think the Antichrist, not the. Yeah. Okay. That, yeah, that's what I was. There's getting. a little. There's a little bit more here. Because it's, it's the, it's the dragon that the woman. That 
and she has to flee from the dragon like the dragon is the antichrist yeah and is the woman giving birth isn't she the one that gives birth to the servant yeah yeah Mm -hmm. the woman zion oh that that was really i liked listening to his commentary on that that was uh i don't know just another good reminder of isn't the woman though the church it's yeah yeah she 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 represents zion right Mm -hmm. which is we'll have a whole lecture just on her we will is that what you said yeah i i can't remember what number it is or whatever but there's uh the woman zion oh cool and there's anyway some fun dreams and and things that go along with that a lot of people have seen that as as long as well as uh ezra's eagle so if you study all of Ezra's or whatever, he also sees uh, the woman Zion in the same scenario and everything. And he puts it in a kind of a different light. I, it's, it's pretty fun. Mm. That's cool. Can I read that next little part? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Because I think this will help us. All right. And seven crowns. So he was an exalted being too. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, stars being a metaphor for sons of God, and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to be delivered to devour her child as soon as it was born, as soon as it was born in the end time. And she brought forth a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her children or child was caught up by God into his throne while Jesus doesn't come to rule the earth with a iron rod, he has Aries to do that. I don't know what that means. That's just transcribed stuff. When you read about the servant Isaiah, that's what he does. And the woman fled to the wilderness <clears throat> where she had a place prepared of God that they might beat her there. 12,000 and three score days, three and a half years. That's also in Daniel. Isaiah talks about three years, but that could be part of three and a half years. So the woman who personifies God's elect, she doesn't know, she doesn't now need to go through the disasters and covenant curses at the end time when they begin. She prevails with child when they begin. She goes, she goes birth to she goes birth to deliver. She gives birth. To deliver. I don't know. It takes her in the journey in the wilderness. That's in Isaiah. So what Spencer seized in his vision was something that was confirmed to his role in things. And I asked him, Well, weren't you aware of people in the wilderness? And he said, yeah, but it didn't concern him. It's not what he was focused on. These people don't have to go through covenant curses. Yeah. This earthquake and invasion by enemies and plagues, those covenant curses, they don't come up upon the elect of God. Remember the protection clause of the Lord's covenant. Start believing in it. It works. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought and prevailed. Not, nor was they... Don't know. I can't make sense of it real fast. (laughs) Um, Go ahead. Yeah. I just, I think it's so interesting, just all that imagery, and I love the explanation of it. Um, I I do think it's interesting um, that, yeah, that just the, just kind of seeing maybe how it plays out, you know, she's in labor, and so, you know, that labor is obviously we're going to be feeling, um, we're going to be feeling some pain, right? And, um, but then she, 
let's see where where was it so but then she's de she delivers the son or oh yeah flees into the wilderness for three and a half years or delivers so does she sorry i'm i'm forgetting does she she flees into the wilderness and delivers the son in the wilderness is that the is that the how it goes i think she's already had the son because before she's fleeing. ready to devour her devour him okay and then flees into the wilderness yeah because that was kind of the imagery i was thinking like the 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 that son is delivered and maybe yeah as part of that like heading and then heading into the wilderness experience that that last you know i think that last three and a half years like is referred to the wrath you know where and that's when you know all those disasters and covenant curses are going yeah on. which you know we not to say that you know there's no labor pains before that that will be filling but but the the second half is is where the wrath comes down um but i would just had a thought that you know i think you know with revelation this is written after christ has come you know and i think so much i mean it obviously is painting a picture of the war in heaven and everything too right like we i think so often that's kind of as christians or lds I don't know if all Christians are kind of seeing the pre-mortal battle yeah. or whatever in heaven or whatever. But um, anyways, I'm just thinking like this, this revelation is specifically for the end times, which we know it's the, and, and so it's obviously not Christ right there, right? That child like as this would play out, it wouldn't be Christ being born at that time in the end in the end times to come and perform this this work. So, anyways, again, it's just kind of like, well, why don't we ever? Why? Yeah, it's just so it's it's so interesting. So many of these scriptures that we read and you know, a lot of them that he quotes, I'm like, wow, why haven't we? entertained any other possibility besides christ with any of these mm -hmm. i don't know do you get what i'm saying <laughs> i think it's yeah, because I isaiah was written in such codes and layers so that we have to hunt and search and be taught by the lord to find it and if we don't do that we're not going to know but um as if it was just really plain, then everybody would know, and I don't know, it wouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it, the end. yeah, it's obviously not made to be easy, right? It's not like not even reading close. Harry Potter or something. It's like, but, but I, I was just, I'm just surprised that there's, I don't know, is is there? Have you come across like any, anyone besides kind of Avraham and that group that? has thrown out the idea that there's this end time Davidic king I mean I know there's like there's some quotes from the early brethren which I find so fascinating but, mm -hmm. but you know outside the church or even you know currently inside the church there's just like I'm just still surprised that there's nothing mm -hmm. I don't know. yeah I think it's supposed to be that way yeah. just like John the Baptist Oof, he was just doing his thing out there just this crazy guy eating his locusts and honey and it's gonna be crazy <laughs> right yeah, it's like prepare to to be unsettled Absolutely. right it's gonna I, we're gonna have to wrestle what is happening is this true uh -huh. and we're gonna have to have our holy ghost help us yeah i think so too I, oh, I also oh. feel like the scriptures, all of the scriptures, not just Isaiah, are a closed book. And as we put diligence, as we seek the Lord and search them and want to know his word, then you can read through the same verses as like a different person. 
Mm -hmm. and you can see things that you that were always there but that you your eyes never saw before right yeah before um studied um abraham stuff i always thought that that child that was given birth to was the political kingdom of of christ you know but but this puts a whole different thing on it since um studying from Avraham. He's the oh. first one I think that's ever said of being as the uh, the servant. At the beginning of this um episode, so it was kind of what we would have talked about last week, he does mention that uh Dwayne Crowther had the idea of a servant listed in his book. Oh. Um but it wasn't very developed or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it, from Avraham, you know, there's lots of different offshoot groups. You've got Doctrine of Christ and different remnant ones and things that have come along and um, uh, help perpetuate that idea. Mm -hmm. of, of oh, I also have another little quote about... Um... What Brigham Young said. The servants and get it more commonplace, but but yeah, Jewish ones don't for sure. <laughs> Sorry, Cameron, I didn't know you were still talking. It's kind of coming in and out. Yeah, I I'm just going through another little dead spot here or whatever. So yeah, don't mind me. <laughs> no, we want to hear what all you say. I know. <laughs> we have to redo this episode. <laughs> but um i i did write in my notes that brigham young says the same will happen in the last days as to we will get a john the baptist forerunner or an enoch who establishes lion mm -hmm. i also wrote he'll come out of the lineage of christ the tribe of judah and then I put, will there be a literal king? I put a question mark. Holy cow. <laughs> well, I, I kind of wonder if that will be paid. Okay, so this ties into Ezra's eagle, where once that all fishes through and all the killings done, and they have the whoever's the leader of the eagle heads, if that will be kind of like the one world order where that person thinks they're going to rule the whole earth. I don't know, something I kind of thought about. Mm -hmm. They're going to try to say, okay, this will be the one religion you get to follow, and this is what you have to do. And well, it, won't, think, it won't be the way we're, we're doing it. Oh, no, not at all. And I think ultimately it is the, the Antichrist setting himself up as king, you know, him is trying to establish himself as king of the world. And and there will be the Davidic king that, you know, from just my understanding, starting in Israel, you know, or with Judah and ultimately, though, in the end, becoming, becoming king. Overall. Getting back to kind of what we were talking about or just a little bit ago, um, I asked a friend of mine if he, because he's quite, you know, he, he's read a lot. And so I asked him, have you ever heard about a Davidic servant at the end time? And he thought for a minute, he says, I think I have heard about a David, but that's all he had to say about it. Oh. He didn't really know anything about it, but he had heard. And I said, well, I said, I'm studying with a group of people who are talking about the, the, a very important David in the end time. And um, so then he uh, began to, to speculate that perhaps it would be De David Bednar, because I said his name would be David. So it was interesting that someone that was very, very well read and, you know, always teaching uh, in the church. Um, had heard but didn't have any real context or anything to say about it mm -hmm. oh. right 
I also put in my notes, he will be crowned king, as was Hezekiah. Yeah. Called David. yeah. That's something that's like so intriguing to me, right? Like Isaiah, who lays out this whole kind of end time plan and everything, he doesn't necessarily focus on David for the, the type of the Davidic covenant. He focuses hugely on Hezekiah rather mm -hmm. than David and, and what that helps us understand about the end time and everything is, is quite intriguing. Uh, the Hezekiah story was new to me when I came across uh, like Isaiah decoded and, and things. I had never focused in on, on Hezekiah. It was just another name in this big old book that I had never <laughs> dove into before. And so it, it's quite interesting to really unpack who Hezekiah is and that kingly role. I mean, not in just a, a spiritual kingship like this is literal king of the end time uh, yeah. very interesting that is also, interesting. I wrote, he yeah. will be like joseph of egypt yeah. anointed king by like a pharaoh was and the spirit of god will come upon him and he will be accepted in that son servant phase well, the whole uh, Hezekiah thing really invokes a lot of self-sacrifice uh, more than kingliness. It's that role of suffering in order to uh, liberate and save yes. uh, his people. So that gives you a lot of at least character traits of what the Davidic uh, servant will be embodying. Yeah, he's going to be in such suffering because it said... A translated being so he's gone through some major descents like joseph of egypt did you know he was in prison and <laughs> suffering so not like king charles or anything right <laughs> <laughs> but like You're your brain's trying to logically <laughs> think who is that hmm. <laughs> yeah um i i love that yeah, the Hezekiah story. And again, just listening to him talk about it again. It and uh I it's so amazing. Like you're saying, Cameron, like I I was completely unaware of Hezekiah and all of that. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so important. And then yeah, and Lisa, you're saying like the suffering he went through, like on behalf for the people and and that again kind of helping us see what this latter day david will do for the people right like he is he is here to to save them and it's it's quite amazing to think about there's going to be so much going on too i mean i was just reminded um, someone sent me uh, an old lecture by Orson Hyde. Mm -hmm. And it was so interesting. He goes into such detail, backed up by scripture, scripture, scripture. Everything he says, he's pulling from the scriptures, from the prophecies about the two servants in Jerusalem. Oh, yeah. And at one point, when the big earthquake, when all the nations are surrounding, that holy city there's a huge earthquake and the prophets are lying dead yeah. and the world is just so excited because we finally killed these people who have had all this power over us that have caused plagues and famines to come upon us and in other words they have the power to invoke those types of things and they're lying dead they've given their lives when the earthquake occurs they are taken up to heaven and they are returned and they are alive. So it's just, I mean, when you think, when I read that, I thought there's going to be so much going on. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It so makes me want to go through every one of those scriptures that I told myself, okay, Sunday, that's your job. You're going to go through every one of those scriptures that he cites. Yeah. Super cool lecture. Do you have a link for that or something, Lisa? I'll, I will. How can I get it to you? Because I somebody sent it to me in like a text, the the biggest, the most, the neediest excerpt, 
And I've tried to locate the whole of it, but it's long. I mean, it's really long. Um, yeah, if you want to send it to me, I can send it out to room. Okay, I'll do that because it's definitely worth, it's worth reading. Yeah, well, and that just kind of brings up a point of like the, you know, there is, you know, obviously the, you know, thinking about and discussing like the Davidic King just is so important and fascinating. And, but then, you know, I think about like, there's going to be, there's going to be a lot of people involved, not just the Davidic King doing everything, right? Like thinking of those two, the two servants or witnesses, what do we call them? What do they refer to? The two witnesses? Anyways. The two prophets. The two prophets. Thank you. Uh, and then others, like we know, we know like John has a super important role. And I mean, oh my gosh, the things we're going to see and experience. This is so crazy. So yeah. mind-blowingly cool. <laughs> You know, like President Nelson or said, you know, like we will get to live out what Nephi saw only in vision. Like this is so cool. We're at the, the pinnacle of this. Yeah. And no wonder everybody like looked to this day in just, you know, anticipation and and with like eagerness, like they wanted to be here for that, right? And and how many of them will? I mean, it's going to be so remarkable. Yeah. yeah. Like okay. President Nelson says, take your vitamin pills. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I want to bring up one more thing, guys. <laughs> so I'm getting this from Morgan Phil Potts, Hardston uh, mm -hmm. YouTubes. And he said something in there that reminded me of kind of what we're talking about here. And He's getting this out of the Joseph Smith papers that came out fairly recently and said, and this is all relating right there in Revelation 12, 5, the man child. So he's maybe equating this more to Joseph Smith. So the date, I wrote really good notes on this one. March 11th, 1844. This is just before he was martyred a few months. Jo Joseph organized a council that he and his closest associates organized the literal kingdom of God on earth. It was never publicly available until these Joseph Smith papers came out just not too long ago. It was called the Council of 50. And the first meeting, Joseph Smith is sustained as prophet, seer, king, priest, and, and king and priest of all the earth to shouts of Hosanna. And within three months, he is killed and caught up to the throne of, the, of God. And then in verse six, he was talking about the woman in the church fled to the wilderness and it goes on to talk about the war in heaven. Anyway, um, does that make any sense to anybody? Has anybody? Well, I, I took a, a class from Garrick Dirkmont, and he was on the, the he helped trans, or do the Joseph Smith papers. And when they, I had that class, he said, at that time, Joseph, Joseph Smith had been extremely anxious up to that point because he knew he had to get some stuff done and had to get it established. And that was it. Once he did that, um, the Council of the 50, he, he, it was like he was relaxed. Now that he, he knew he was going to be martyred. He didn't know when, but he knew he would be. And once he had, had accomplished that, he was relieved because that had to have taken place before he could go that's all that's that's all he had told us so at that point did did he have all the keys then you guys know 
well uh, the keys that he was to have he didn't have the keys of resurrection and stuff but yeah as far as i know he yes he did and he had to get those passed on get everything passed on and taken care of so does our current prophet have all the keys you guys think no, well, no, he no. wouldn't have the keys to the resurrection or the keys, but all the keys necessary that for, uh, for the, the church, he would. Because I've heard that both Joseph and Hiram had all of the keys of this dispensation, like they were joint dispensation heads. But as far as uh, being passed on and everything, I, I, I don't know if, if things are active or dormant or I don't know. I'm not as versed in the. Guys, this is like putting together a puzzle. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's very interesting. And this like really um, at that Restoration Torah conference that I was at a few weeks back and stuff, two of the lectures I would recommend going and, and listening to as well, uh, the Hannah Stoddard one and then the um, uh, Joshua Erickson gave a, a talk on Orson Hyde and the Davidic Servant and everything that Orson helped contribute to that uh, that sentiment and everything and the the dedication and all that kind of stuff like it was amazing it was good Can we get a hold of that camera um if you just uh google or youtube uh restoration torah conference 2023 you will see all the conferences lectures pop up what was and the other and, and who what was the first one that you recommended um so there's there's quite a few that are just awesome like <laughs> there it's a bunch of different remnant groups and so it's not like you know it's not like i would endorse all of them or anything but a very interesting uh, uh all of the talks but um the first one that hannah stoddard because uh, she's talking about joseph smith being the davidic servant and and things like that and you know it was received by like half of the people there and half of them were like nah, nah, nah. <laughs> kind of grumbling they didn't agree with it um and then the the other one was about orson am i saying the right person orson hyde yes, yes. yeah like the dedicated digital yeah, yeah yeah yes uh he gave a, a talk on orson hyde um that like blew my mind and made me want to go like study all about orson hyde because he is like such a instrumental figure in bridging the gap between judah and joseph and i hadn't i had no idea I, like he dedicated his life and his teachings and, and things to 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 the restoration of judah it's quite an amazing talk and he was very scripturally literate right more so, mm -hmm. more, David more so than probably many um members of the church he was quite literate yeah hmm. the 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 thing about joseph smith you know saying joseph smith was the davidic servant is though that he's from ephraim like he can't you know we're, it's pretty clear that he will be from the tribe of judah isn't it yeah and the name yeah. david and such so you know not diminishing joseph smith's role but yet i i don't yeah, he doesn't fit that part and and then in doctrine and covenants i never remember it talks about the you know there's a couple there's you know when, when they're question they're questioning in isaiah who's the branch who's this who's that and and there's different different people anyways it wasn't just yeah um, I, I just have a hard time put it yeah joseph, joseph smith comes through both lines I, somebody was uh through mary magdalene the, the ephraim part uh, and through jesus christ the judah so um along the the lines of that just to to share what they were talking about so in uh hannah's presentation she kind of briefly mentions it and then after she talked like everybody like got up and started talking and this stuff but this is like a, a fairly generally accepted thing amongst all of the remnant groups is that joseph smith had all 12 tribes in his bloodline um and from different research and things his two predominant ones are ephraim and, and judah but mm -hmm. that he will um have both the the priestly and the kingly bloodlines 
um, to give him the authority kind of thing. But most of the, the people there believed from, and they were trying to like quote me all the scriptures and stuff. I didn't have time to write them all down, but that he had all 12 tribes in his blood, mm. which was interesting. I, you know, whether or not you agree with that, because like I haven't done any of the research or anything, but yeah. that was a lot of people's conjectures. But um, would he be in, in his patriarchal blessing? Would it have said uh, he he he's from the tribe of Joseph through Ephraim, or would it say he's from all tribes? You know, I'm gonna I have to read that again. Um, I've got it, but I thought I, I heard that. that his patriarchal blessing said Ephraim, but I could totally be imagining that. Right, well, I I I re recall that Abraham has said that probably in the Doctrine and Covenants that Joseph Smith says, refers to us as a people as Gentiles and Ephraim. Right. So I think he identified at least personally with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. a, my, my, mother, my mother's side is Jewish. And in my patriarchal blessing, it's, it, it kind of came through me, but I, there's six of us and I'm the only one that it showed up in, but it said, I will answer to, you know, I will be considered from the tribe of Joseph three from with a scattering of, of Judah, which I should be most thankful because they will not be strangers to me. So I've got both sides, but I would answer up to, uh, to Ephraim. Wow. Uh -huh. so there's an organization to it, but yet you have a, a mix kind of a thing. And which is interesting, right? Because we're all a bunch of mud blood mixed right. <laughs> yeah. races, right? Yeah, <laughs> too many of us. <laughs> yeah, at the end. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. But another thing that's super interesting to me, because I just learned it, is that all of our my siblings, there's seven of us, and not all of them are brave enough to get their DNA done. Mm -hmm. now, so you mm -hmm. can have, you can have bloodlines, but there's also DNA, and it can be completely different. So the siblings and I that have had that done, we are completely different. Yeah, I am all European. Some of them have all kinds of things. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think I didn't know that could happen. Yeah, me too. Same thing with my sisters. I was so shocked. I was like, "Oh, we're not exactly the same." So it's really fascinating when you think of that. Mm -hmm. Would you ever trace your line back through family search? Have I? See if you go all the way through. Have, have I guys ever tried to do that? It's like. I have, and I, it's, oh, it very, takes hours to do it. And I've, I've done, done it. on some lines. It's very oh, interesting. What through you my saw. grandma Durfee, the Barney line, it goes back really easily. And through my, I tried to do it through both sides of my family and through the Denmark side. And it goes back too, but uh, it does, mine do go back through Jesus Christ and Mary Magdalene. And then uh, clear back to Adam and Eve. You got to do it sometime because when you get all the way back, um, Adam and Eve, <laughs> somebody was just being silly, but they put Eve's picture in his sister rib. <laughs> of course they did. <laughs> anyway, it, we're it's silly people, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. It's kind of fun to try to do that. It's like going through a maze for hours and hours and hours because then you come to a dead end and you have to backtrack and then go down another line. And mm -hmm. it takes, it's fun though. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Well, anything else before we. Close I have out one more for the thing, day? Cameron. Did you? Yeah. Okay. So the last video, somebody said something about the day of powers. Mm, yeah. Do you remember that? Did yeah, you, it's at the, the first part of this lecture. Did you go do a study of that? I tried to do a study of it and I couldn't find anything. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Like I looked up the one in Psalms and then I got distracted with other things and stuff. But yeah, like there's that one in Psalms. So um, was it the first book of Psalms? Because I found it more in the like 110th book of Psalms. Uh, yeah, it. I forget which one it is. He he gives it as a reference in his sources, um, but I'll I can send that to you as well. So um, no, you don't need like, to send it to me. I'll just keep hunting. But 
how's the best way to look for that? Like what so I would, words did you put in? Um, well, I just looked up the reference that he gave and then I went and looked on Bible Hub at the original translation. And then I was gonna go out from there and look at all of the different times when that phrase was used. Um, but again, I, <laughs> I went down another fun rabbit hole um, <laughs> and only got to the Psalms one. But uh, yes, so yeah, I, cause I don't think I've got that in the transcription yet, but I've got it in his notes, the, the source that he referenced for Psalms. So yeah, let me look at that up and uh, let's see. I think it was Lisa was going to send me a link to something. Anyway, like I'll send it out in my email um, yeah. with today's yeah. video and all that kind of stuff. That'd be awesome. I'm going to send you Orson and Hyde. Before we, we close up today, I have a question because you guys are so well read. I can't think of anybody else to ask. I'm looking for something that we may have even discussed it before. I remember reading it. I don't know where. Quote by John Taylor about creating our yards, our gardens, our, where we live, our habitation, so beautifully and so well ordered that the angels come down and want to be there. Does anybody remember discussing that or know where to find that quote? I have heard it or read it and I can't, I've been ser doing searches, I cannot find it. Mm. Huh. No. Yeah, I've never heard that before. That's beautiful. I haven't either. I just remember hearing if we do our yards excessively like it's uh -huh. make it an idol <laughs> an idol yeah <laughs> but i i but think yeah, that was in this about group. being i mean i felt that personally even <laughs> like anybody local on here nope um <laughs> my yard is a complete mess right now but like I, I've always felt that, that we need, as we're building Zion, turning our, our homes into Zion, that we need mm -hmm. to uh, have a focus on uh, taking it from a telestial phase to a terrestrial yes. phase of, of garden kind of thing and communicating <laughs> and, and peace and Zion and all that kind of stuff. But I, think I haven't had that quote before. Yeah, I think that's what that quote was leaning into is creating paradise. Yeah. And I cannot find it. So I'm still you searching. Know, yeah, it, it seems, I, you know, I just spitball and he'll, but it seems more like a Jedediah Grant kind of a quote than John Taylor, but I could be wrong. But I'll, I'll look and see if I can find that. Because hmm. Jedediah Grant stuff, remember that, Mother, when we were diving into his near-death experiences oh. and stuff? Uh -huh. oh, well, he did die, and they kept bringing him back. And so he was talking about yeah. the spirit world and and how those flowers and stuff like on one stock, I don't know if you call it stock, but stem or whatever. Stem. There was all different kinds of flowers coming out of one mm -hmm. thing. He said that it was just gorgeous. And mm -hmm. I mean, unlike anything we have here. <laughs> yeah. And they kept bringing him back to life or whatever. And then like after like the third or fourth time, he's like, guys, let me go. <laughs> my turn <laughs> stay there I but stay they there. kept bringing him back and interviewing him about the spirit world and then letting them die again and then bringing oh him back my gosh oh, that's fascinating is. why don't we do that more <laughs> exactly because hey, we're we kind of scared of near-death experiences <laughs> that'd be yeah. cool oh that's good I like to, just before we go, um, after all this end time stuff is said and done and we get into the millennium, it gave me a different perspective on uh, David the servant that he will become the prince. Of course, Christ is going to be our king during the millennium, but he's not always going to be there. Mm -hmm. He... Um, he'll come and go. But this uh, end time servant, David, will be crowned prince and he'll he'll be the one that's ruling us for the most part. Mm -hmm. And I, mm -hmm. I had never put that together before. I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, me yeah. too. And I was thinking, you know, with Alvarham question and answer coming up Tuesday, if any of us are brave enough to ask a question not it do it darlene <laughs> no i said any that are brave enough that's I'm not, not. <laughs> i'm not i know right isn't no, it somebody kind of has because, like, to yeah darlene you need let's to be select somebody right now 
<laughs> is that coming well, up? Well, sometimes Avraham will just oh just put and you in your place. I know. <laughs> what a stupid <laughs> question. <laughs> you can't find it. The scriptures don't say it, or whatever is little thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh dang it! I know. I'm a little bit scared of him too. I'm not ever going to say anything. Cameron, you say it. Yeah, Cameron. <laughs> the one time I asked a question, I got shut down on it too. And I'm like, yeah, well. <laughs> um, if you ever want to send me questions, I can send those in in bulk and they can be anonymous if you want them or whatever. Oh. Um, but Rachel is always asking me for if any of people in our discussion have any questions they want to submit by email um, so that you can oh. consider them ahead of time. Well, that, that usually is well, a little send, bit easier. Let's send it up front. Then we can get the conversation yeah. on the Davidic servant okay. maybe so, we can Cameron, bend the, the flavor of the meeting <laughs> yeah <laughs> and Cameron did I hear you correctly that he can, uh, meaning Abraham considers the questions beforehand sometimes yeah so like Rachel uh, collects know. them all yes and then she'll kind of group them into categories and like kind of show Avraham like where this discussion is kind of headed and stuff so he can kind of brace himself a little but I, I don't think he reads all of the questions no he might be less curt or testy if um he sees the questions ahead of time that might be a good idea mm -hmm. I'm a little yeah. intimidated by him too <laughs> yeah he's a little intimidating he, you know he does have kind of a social disorder that <laughs> is a little brash sometimes Especially late at night, like that, when his blood sugar is low and stuff. But <laughs> I know we could get him to he talk about, about his blood sugar every time. Won't won't he just have something next to him to to no. take care of that? <laughs> to give him some candy. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I think we could get him to talk about the Pharaoh of Egypt. That yeah. That, I would really like to. I would too. And then would save me like that would clear you that that's right you wouldn't have to drive 500 miles next time you have a question mark over your head yeah <laughs> that's probably still a better place to ask your question um, <laughs> i had to go twice because i get to the portland temple i was so attacked by satan that day i could not even believe it i couldn't even tell you all the things that happened and I went home so defeated on Thursday. I'm like, I got to go back. And so I went to Medford because they're nicer. <laughs> and I cast out before I went in too. So <laughs> it was wonderful. Good for you. Although at the veil, <laughs> Elo, I had one of my workers just go into a coughing fit right at the veil. And I'm like, I always pay attention to, okay, what is my message here? Because uh -huh. it went on for like five minutes. Yeah. Cameron, okay. help me. What was that? <laughs> or was it just the coffee? <laughs> Could be a plethora of things. You know. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. No, that was in uh, Portland. That was in Portland, not at Medford. Anyway. Just because I was asking about the Davidic servant, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> then that person gets a coffee attack. No, it got, I got several ordinance workers just snipping at me. Uh, the sealer, he snipped at me. Wow. Oh. And then the coughing attack, the veil. And then I was in the celestial room. I was the only one there. I'm clear up in the balcony. Nobody there. Two ordinance, and then I'm in deep, deep, deep prayer. And two ordinance workers walk in. They thought no one was in there. They're laughing and chit chatting, and it completely interrupted my prayer. And I jumped up, looked down at them. They didn't see me, and I was like, "Oh my word!" <laughs> so finally, I went home, and I'm like, "Okay, I got to go somewhere else." It was unbelievable, you guys. Hmm. Interesting experience. It was. I still am kind of. Yeah, spooky. like making sense of it. Yeah, because it was just Thursday. Oh, but yesterday was wonderful in Medford. Wow. 
That's interesting. I need to go to a support group for it, though. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't even seem like the same kind of templates. <laughs> oh, wow. Never had anything like that. <laughs> I hadn't either. I was like, See, what, I, I have it at one temple that I always have kind of things like that at. But everybody always looks at me weird every time I say something. I'm like, OK, whatever. I, know. I guess it's just me. No, it's not. <laughs> other temples i always have like amazing experiences but this one temple always it, it's always off-putting oh my goodness that is so interesting wow that is, okay thank you support group all right yeah so send me all your questions and things and we'll we'll get those set up the chain <laughs> hey yeah, so everybody send in the same oh, questions yeah there you go. so he has to write it down 10 times Tell us <laughs> yeah you've got 20 <laughs> questions about this fair <laughs> hey cameron uh -huh. uh, next week uh -huh. yeah. uh, we'll we'll be studying the next one on the list um it says it's completed and we can't access the transcript is there going to be a way we can oh. see the transcript yeah yeah, I'll open that up here in just a couple of minutes as soon as I get home and and do that and stuff. But yeah, so um, this was like about a year ago now uh, that I had originally called for people to help me with the transcription. And that was the one that actually did. <laughs> and so uh, number four That's should funny. be done. Um, but yeah, I'll open up that transcription and everything so that we can get that uh, viewed. And, you know, it wouldn't hurt to go through it again and just, you know, a second set of eyes on everything. And then I'll try to work it. <laughs> Finishing well, we up this need to finish lecture number three. three I first. totally missed the boat on it. Because yeah. number three is not done uh -huh. at all. Yeah, that one kind of took a hit with life. Yep. But, no, but I'm saying we didn't help yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. It's the beginning <laughs> of the summer and stuff. Like, yeah, I understand. <laughs> Anyway, oh, I can't yeah. wait. thanks for all your help on it and everything. Thanks for coming and having fun discussions. Yeah, it's so fun. I love my Saturdays. Get to talk about Isaiah like this because you just don't anywhere else. So fun. You guys are awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, have a great day, everyone. We'll see you when we see you, Hebrew or otherwise. But <laughs> anyway, bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.